Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining Your Moz. USB-C connector use has grown tremendously in the past few years, replacing micro USB as the standard small USB connector. Now there are a lot of benefits for USB-C. Uh, the cable can go in either way versus on, in only one direction, and we always seem to pick the wrong direction when we want to plug in the cable here. USB-C uh, can support up to 20 volts at 5 amps or 100 watts of charging power needs a special cable and the charger and the device have to be set up for that of course but much more power than you can get through a micro uh, b connection and usb-c has become the standard now for phones laptops and other devices so we want it in all our other devices whether it's uh, chargers power banks or vaping devices but is usb-c always a better choice it runs off the same five volts but are the things to that we need to be aware of before we totally commit to USB-C for certain devices. Now, micro USB and USB-C both look the same if you're just taking a quick glance, but if we start getting closer, micro USB on the right and USB-C on the left, you can see five pins for the micro USB on the right, but 24 pins for USB-C on the left. Now, on the circuit board where this will plug into, namely this connector here, the connections for this are a lot larger than the connections for the USB-C connector. This means this is going to be a little bit more reliable if the connector is abused because it's got a, a harder grab, a bigger grab onto the circuit board. Because of all these tiny connections, USB-C connectors can benefit from uh, additional anchoring to the circuit board for reliability, anchoring the connector to the board. A higher quality connector is often required. and well, anchoring is good for micro B connectors too, but because of these tiny connections, it's especially good to have for the USB-C connectors. Unfortunately, USB-C connectors are also more expensive than micro B. This can tempt companies to buy cheaper connectors and cheaper connectors may not have essentially the features needed to have a long-term reliability, to have a good connector. So USB-C is great, there are a lot of advantages, but three things are very important. You need a quality connector, which costs more money. You need a connector that anchors in to the circuit board and put up an image right now. The left-hand image shows, circled in red, shows the pins that get soldered into the circuit board. Uh, in this case, it's for grounding the shell of the connector for static protection, but these pins help keep the connector from snapping the soldered circuit board connections, which are in the back of the connector out of view, when the cable's tugged or rotated back and forth or you're kind of rough putting the cable in. The right-hand image shows grounded connections, circled in red, that just get soldered just onto the top of the circuit board. That can't handle abuse nearly as well. Tugging at the cable, inserting at the right angle, can snap those grounded connections, and then soon after that, the connections that handle the power and etc. in back of the connector can also snap off. Now, here's a, a photo of a USB-C connector showing the anchoring legs going down into the board. And you can see, this really anchors the connector. And it's good to have with micro B connectors with any connector, but it's really necessary to have with a USB-C connector to have some reliability. Other things that are important also is the fit of this connector to the cutout that's in the case. And here's another one here. Now here you can see there's a little more room around it, but for this one, there's a nice tight fit. Uh, tight fit. Now that's good. If you put in the cable, now if I start rocking the cable back and forth, if there's any space between that connector and this case for the device, then the forces gets transferred to the connector. If there's a tight fit around there, then the connector can't move anywhere, whether it's anchored or not. Now, this is the only thing we can really check uh, easily. The other stuff about the anchoring and stuff is good to have and for the manufacturers to be conscious of, but that fit around there is something to really look for. If you see a big opening, this is uh, a little bit over here, but if you see a big wide gap, that's going to be a connector you really, really have to be gentle with because it can move very, very easily if you start twisting the cable, yanking it out, coming at an angle, or anything like that. Now, some connectors are actually installed vertically 
coming up out of the circuit board. The two images I showed you before were horizontal connectors, but here's a photo of one that's uh, vertical. It's a micro B connector, but it's mounted vertically to the circuit board at a right angle. It's for an Indican device. Now, for a vertical connector, it's much easier to start bending it over and you know, torquing it over from abuse if, it's a, if there's a wide opening for it in the case. And that makes it really easy to snap the connections. Now, Indican gets around, gets around some of that by epoxying it in place. You might be able to see some of the epoxy down at the basic connector there. But with a tight fitting case cutout, plus that, now you've got some extra reliability added into what is essentially the weakest way to attach a connector here going vertically. Now, unfortunately, not all companies will use a good USB-C connector that is well anchored, especially in low-cost devices designed for a limited lifespan. Now, these are higher quality devices. They've got uh, good connectors in them, I think, and I think they would last a long time. But for others, that's not gonna happen. So what can we do to help our USB connectors last as long as possible. Uh, since for many devices, factory repair isn't offered, and it can be very, very hard for anyone, no matter how experienced you are, to solder a USB-C connector back onto the circuit board. The pins are incredibly tiny, and some of them are even underneath the device and not even accessible except for machine or automated uh, soldering. So prevention is important. Prevention is our, our best tool to, to make these connectors last as long as possible. Number one, do external charging whenever you can. Save these connectors for emergencies or for when you actually need it, when you're traveling or something like that. Be gentle. Don't jam in the cables. Don't rock back and forth. Don't tug them out. Uh, don't pick up everything, you know, by the cable. You, the, you're not going to be able to exchange that connector. So you want it to last as long as possible. The shell around the pins can actually, if there's opening, if the opening's big enough, that shell can actually start to open up, can it start to unfold because it's sheet metal just folded around. So if you're tugging and pulling and bending, it can come looser and looser and looser. Now your cable can start sitting at an angle and that can short circuit pins, that can damage the device, uh, that could cause the device to discharge the batteries or do all kinds of nasty things. You want to keep liquids and dust out of this connector. Now that's just for overall reliability and overall good use of any device uh, that you might have. Uh, but especially for ones like USB-C where the pins are close together, uh, and there are 24 of them, you can use compressed air to get out dust, but you want to keep the liquids out of there. If you get something in there, never use something conductive to clean out the connector. Don't use a metal pin or something like that. There's electron, there's power in there and you don't want to short circuit these pins out. You can fold over a piece of tissue and just use the corner in there or something like that. And if you want, you can always just put a small piece of tape over the opening so you don't get liquids or dust in there. Never, ever use a device of any kind with a loose or damaged connector. You can cause a short circuit, as I mentioned before. It could kill the device or even cause uh, battery problems. Uh, if you're still under warranty, contact the manufacturer. If out of warranty, it, it'll probably cost too much to repair an inexpensive device. For a very expensive device uh, and out of warranty, ah, maybe you can find if someone will replace a connector, but that could be expensive. If you do have any USB connector fail, let the company know. Let them know you're pissed off. Tell them you'll never buy their products again. Don't let them use a crappy connector with a higher failure rate just because they want to save a few bucks and that they know the backlash will be minimal. The people just go, "Ugh, I'll just buy a new one. No, let them know. Don't let them skimp on product quality just to make money at our expense. So USB connectors can be great for convenience with putting the cable in either way, faster charging with the right devices, better compatibility with all other new devices, tablets, phones, laptops, etc. But it can be a problem if the manufacturer uses a crappy connector. Before buying, check around, see if other users are having problems, check the forums, uh, check online uh, reviews and things like that. Yes, that can take a couple of months for those kind of complaints to appear, but if you have the time, it's a great way to find out if the USB-C connector is a weak point in an otherwise great design or not. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.